Hello, horse guys and gals. Welcome back to another episode. Hope you all had a great St. Patrick's Day. To be honest, this St. Patrick's Day, I don't, I'm not actually even positive what day it was, but um, the day passed. What was it? Was it Saturday or Friday? I don't, I truly don't know. It was one of those days, but the day passed and I was like, is today St. Patrick's Day? Because I actually don't know. I've never been so uninvolved from the holiday, but like I never saw anything about it on Facebook. Nothing like, I only saw a few things on social media that like people were going out and whatever, or like on TikTok, they were dying the river green and stuff. And I was like, I think it's today or tomorrow, St. Patrick's Day, but I don't actually truly know. So yeah, anyway, um, it's spring. I think we are supposed to get here in Iowa. I saw on the, on Facebook somewhere that we're supposed to get like some giant snowstorm again. And I'm really hoping that it's not actually going to happen that like some weather channel put out that we were supposed to get this huge snowstorm. They're not really sure when it was going to get here. Not really sure how much snow we were going to get. Um, and it was all kind of like sus. Like nobody knew when it was going to be here, how much we were going to get or like how cold it was going to be. So it is supposed to, I think there's chances of snow maybe tonight, but I think it's supposed to be mostly just rain. Um, I, me and my boyfriend Thomas went to um, an auction this morning. I, it wasn't an actual auction. The, the actual auction is on Saturday. Today is what, Thursday? But we went today to just drive around and like look at the items because they... They have, he, they're going to a farm auction. So it's at this big um, property where they have their auction like maybe once a month. I don't know if it's once, a, I don't think it's once a week. I think it's once a month. Um, and so we went this morning because they want to look at a few things. And oh my gosh, it was packed. There was so much stuff there. Um, I were, we went last spring, I think, and we were there for a long time. And so, I don't know. He asked if I wanted to go this weekend, but it honestly looks like they're going to be there all day because there's so much stuff there that they're auctioning off. Um, so, there was a lot of stuff there, though, that was kind of cool. They have all these, like, mini hoes. And you guys, I would love to have a mini hoe. If you own... A property or like you want to own your own horse farm or ranch or whatever oh my gosh if you have the opportunity to buy a mini hoe do it like well for one i've had four horses die now so we've had to borrow equipment for three of them um this last one red that died in january i had to rent a mini hoe which was like 300 bucks so I was thinking, I was like, gosh, it would just be really nice to have one, like just to be able to use for, you know, a situation like that where we have to bury a horse or um, in the fall, we dug power lines underground because I ran power from the power pole up to my tack shed and I had to rent a trencher. And so having a mini hoe that I could put just a really narrow bucket to just like dig a trench would be so nice. It could move like logs and trees out of my way. I was like, dang, it would be nice to have a mini hoe. But dude, they go for so much money. You can see the crappiest, rustiest piece of junk, like no cab on it, no windows, like old as shit. Mini hoe will still go for like $10,000. They're extremely valuable. <laughs> So I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, but damn, it would be really nice to have something like that. Lots of skid loaders. We saw um, lots of rakes. That's what my boyfriend's looking for. He's looking for like those four or eight or six wheel um, rakes for hay and stuff like that. So they were looking for those. Um, Gee, I'm trying to think what else we saw. Oh, a bunch of trucks, a bunch of farm trucks. It must be the season that everyone's looking to get rid of their farm trucks because there was like 20 of them. Bale feeders, um, gates and stuff. Like there's usually a bunch of gates and stuff. We looked at two horse trailers and not that I'm in the market for another horse trailer, but um, there was this big, huge like, 
four horse living quarter, like 35 foot long uh, trailer that was there. Um, we saw it online. He sent it to me online and he was looking at it and thought it would be really cool. I knew it would go for a lot of money. But while we were there, we figured let's jump out and look at it. <laughs> and that thing was huge. I am, it's kind of hard to tell where these things have come from or if somebody has truly owned them and brought them here or if they like got them, got them cheap somewhere and are just bringing them here to, to get as much money as possible for them. Cause this one, like it was, it was kind of dumpy on the inside. Now as dumpy as like a living quarter trailer can get, right? Like I've never had anything that nice, but like there was some garbage in it, like just up on the bed and stuff. Um, it had one of those like wrap around seats where in the tables in the middle, like a breakfast nook, you know, and then you had to like step up on that to get up into the bed. And they like left garbage up there. There was like some lights broken out, um, lots of broken stuff in there. And it was just kind of like, ew. This is kind of like, nope, somebody just didn't take that good of care of it, I don't think. But uh, yeah, had a little tack room in the back. Tires looked in really good shape. Um, but yeah, like some lights broken out. The awning was kind of sketchy, uh, but still much nicer than anything that I own. And it's it's already bid it up quite a bit online. So it's definitely, it's definitely probably going to sell for quite a bit. And then we looked at a little two horse trailer. Now, generally, I would just drive by it. But we were there, so he's like, do you want to just get out and look at it for the fun of it? So I was like, sure. So I get out, look at this two-horse trailer. Now, I have a two-horse trailer. And if you guys watch the vlogs, you know that my two-horse trailer is so damn small. It's probably the smallest two-horse that you can get. It's like a tin can on wheels. The horses hate it. Um, it doesn't have a divider like it used to, but it's like 10 feet long six foot tall it's pretty short so like it's just I keep it around because it's really nice to have to like just drive somebody over to the vet's office or if I'm just going on a trail ride with some friends and I'm only taking one horse 20 minutes away I can just load them up and take that and it doesn't cost much to haul around but this one the one we looked at it was like one of those extra tall ones right like seven feet tall um and I don't know, probably 14, 15 feet long. It was much longer than mine. Um, and so I was looking at it and I was like, this is actually kind of nice for like a two horse, you know? Um, the outside was ugly. Like it needs a paint job really bad. So that's why I was looking at it. I was like, dang, I could buy that and I could flip it. But after looking at it, it had a nice big tack room in the front, um, doors on both sides with like the slide out saddle things. Um, the saddle racks that just like push in and slide out. So lots of spacious room on, in there. Um, and it had feed doors on both sides. The horses have a whole bunch of headroom. So if you have like a draft cross or a big, huge thoroughbred, like it would be still very comfortable for them. Um, and then the inside looked really nice. It was huge. Like sugar would have, you could fit like two of sugar in one side. It was so big and roomy with the pads and everything. And then the doors, it had like the two back doors and then the two little doors up top, which none of my two horses have ever had the little two doors up top. I've always been kind of suspicious of those because I'm like, I don't know. I feel like the horse would be really claustrophobic, like being closed in in the dark like that. But this trailer was actually big enough that I don't think it would really matter. Um, but they were so, it was so tall that like I couldn't shut them. And I'm like five, five or four, five, four or five, five. So I'm like a pretty average height woman so like me reaching up standing on my tippy toes like I like couldn't get it shut so I was like hey Thomas come shut this because I'm too short so I'm actually might keep an eye on it and if Thomas goes to the auction this weekend I might be like if it's only getting bid like five or six hundred bucks like just maybe just bid on it I don't know but it'd be a fun <laughs> repaint project the paint really is the biggest thing that like makes it look dumpy, but the inside and everything structurally looks fine. Um, the floor of the tack room in front is really rusted out and stuff, but that could be um, fixed up a little bit. 
So I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I'm not necessarily counting on it. I really can't afford to be getting more, more stuff. But if I were to get that one, I would sell my, my little two cores. Um, and then, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to look at a lesson horse this weekend. Um, probably going to come home with her if there's nothing like alarmingly wrong, but there's this girl I know, she lives really far from me. She lives like three hours from me, but I bought Oakley and I bought Chance from her. And she messaged me and was like, I have this horse and I think she would be really great for your lesson program if you're looking for another lesson horse. Um, she's got a little bit of arthritis in the front, one of her front knees, but like I trail rode her all last year and she did totally fine on it. Um, and you know, I think she'd be good for your program. So I was like, oh, well, twist my arm, I guess. You know how I am. Like, I literally can't. I actually have. I've said no to a lot of horses in the last, like, year or two. Um, I don't want any more projects this year. I have Hazel. And then Chance, like, I do want to haul Chance around and take Chance to the shows and, like, pony him on some trail rides and stuff like that. I don't think I'm going to be riding him um, or starting him because he is really small still. Um, so I might give him another year. And then I have Rojo and he is, he's big and I would like to be taking him around and doing stuff with him too. So those two, the yearlings are not like full on projects, but they are still like, we still need to put some time and effort into them. So I don't want any more projects this year. So this mare is not a project. She is broke. Um, and she's beautiful. She is a paint, but yeah, I'm going to go look because I really would, it's it it's an investment I need to make in another lesson horse because sugar um you know she can only do so much and like I do want to help her share the load a little bit between I had um a couple really regular lesson kids last year and then their parents actually are going to be interested in taking some lessons this year so you know she's getting older and like especially hauling around adults and like these unbalanced wobbly kids bouncing around up there like it would be nice to have another lesson horse like on deck to share that with um and then bb bb i did use for lessons last year for one of my advanced riders but she's not for like you know total beginners and stuff so um so yeah i'm gonna go look and see um <laughs> since the last time i guys updated you i broke my truck again so my new truck has now broken, um, the brakes have broken, what, two or three times? I'm trying to, they broke the first original time we fixed them, they broke again. Yeah, so, yes, I don't know, we're still figuring what, I, what figuring out what's wrong with the truck I just bought, it, as far as, like, the brake system, because, yeah, it's been rough <laughs> this last week. Um, and I'm just like praying and hoping like it doesn't break again. I just picked it up the other day and so far it's been driving good and I just really like to keep it that way for a while. So I, I'm going to borrow my stepdad's truck again. Um, I borrowed it to go get Rojo and yeah. So anywho, um, Oh, I was going to tell you guys about Luna too. I posted something on my TikTok today. If you guys don't follow me on TikTok, I am really going to try to be more regular on that with talking about the horses and stuff, you know, unless it gets banned. I don't know. I, I'm debating on whether that's really going to happen or not, if it's going to get banned. But um, I guess if it does, oh well, what are we going to do about it? Um, but I'm going to be trying to be more regular on there about like, you know, taking snippets of the horses and what I'm doing around the farm, you know, from the day to day. Um, but I posted something on there today about Luna because I've been just um, a little bit wary lately of Luna because um, she just, she's giving me um, DSLD vibes. So if you guys don't know what DSLD is, um, I, I'm wondering if one of my past horses, Grace had it, but it's really common in, for one horses that are getting older, but I guess maybe it's not real breed specific, but it, it's, it happens a lot in 
horses as they're starting to get older, usually the hind legs are affected more than the fronts, but when those pasterns, the horse's pasterns start to drop really far down, it's called like drop suspensory ligament disorder, I think. And it's basically when their pasterns and their their fetlocks start to sink farther and farther towards the ground and they just don't have that percussion anymore in their in their pasterns. So her hind pasterns sit a lot lower than her fronts and they're they're at like a totally different angle. Um, I don't even know how to explain it, how to just like talk through it really. I have to, I'd have to show you guys a picture, but um, if you go to my TikTok and look at the video, you'll be able to see like they're just dropped a lot lower and like she hasn't displayed any like obvious signs of pain or discomfort or anything like she seems totally fine she likes to run around and play in the snow and when it's cold out she gets frisky and trots around and stuff so it's not like I think that she's miserable or anything I've just been noticing them lately and kind of been like maybe I should just keep an eye on that um so if any of you guys have had horses with DSLD um, share your experience with me down below in the comments or something because I've never owned a horse with DSLD. I'm familiar with it. I've seen horses that have had it. Um, when I did my farrier apprenticeship, um, we worked on some horses with it and you could tell that those horses were definitely more uncomfortable um, being seen by the farrier and stuff. And I just did Luna's feet and she was completely fine. Um, so it's just something I'm kind of keeping an eye on, but like I've never, never owned a horse with it or, you know, how to tell the early onset signs. I don't think you can actually diagnose it unless you take like a tissue sample, like a biopsy type thing. And I'm probably not going to do anything like that. Like I said, unless she seems like she is truly in pain, um, then I'm not going to worry about it too much, but it would be nice to just kind of know if, if that is something that's affecting her. Um, when I rode her a lot, like a couple years ago, cause I, I really only trail rode Luna and she's a good trail horse. Um, I rode her a lot a couple years ago and she, I remember she used to just like trip over her back feet all the time for seemingly like no rhyme or reason, but she would just like, her back legs would like go out from under her. And I even had some people a couple times like ride behind me cause I would ask them like, would you mind? just like riding behind me and telling me if she looks off or like, why is she tripping like that? I don't get it. Like she keeps tripping over her back legs and I don't know what's going on. Like I can't see it. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, she is a saddle bred and I don't know. I don't think it looks like she has elongated pasterns. Like she doesn't look like she has long pasterns. Like some horses you can definitely see that that their pasterns are really long, like and they look abnormal. Hers don't look abnormal. They just look um, more set back than the fronts are. So, so yeah, but I did take her on a ride with us last weekend. Um, I had a friend come down. Now, I don't know if, if you guys watched last year, I rode Luna like two times last year. <laughs> so she's been like semi-retired. So before just hopping on her and going this year, I ponied her along on her our ride on Saturday. We just rode out to the cow pastures and stuff, rode around, and I rode sugar, so I just ponied her along with us. And she did really well. She seemed fine, seemed comfortable. So yeah, it would be nice to just have her refreshed and so that I could, you know, jump on her if we needed a spare, spare trail horse or something. If BB or Sugar were to go lame, and then this mare that I'm gonna look at too will be nice to have something like that too. Hazel comes home next month, so she's gonna be here as well. Um, I haven't talked to the trainer recently, but she sent me some, some pictures and stuff, I think last week. And yeah, Hazel's gonna come home um, in April, so I'm definitely going to be making an effort and keeping myself disciplined on working with her and riding her and definitely taking her around to the shows and everything. So I'm really excited for her to come home and see how they've been doing. I need to go over there this week 
and I'd like to go over there at least a couple times in the next, what is it, 10, today's the 21st, so the next like nine days or so just to see how she's doing and and watch them ride and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm glad I sent her over the winter. This is the first time I've sent a horse off somewhere else to be trained by somebody other than me. So I, if you guys don't know, I sent Hazel to the trainer this winter because I just, I just wanted her to be worked over the winter because I don't really do anything with horses over the winter. Not by choice, but because I literally don't have a really good way to do it. I mean, obviously you can. Everybody can work horses outside in the cold. I'm not saying that um, she couldn't be worked, but Hazel, Hazel really struggles when things are not consistent. Um, and if I, if we get like three weeks of horrible weather with four feet of snow and like negative 20 degree temperatures, like, sorry, I'm, I'm just not doing it. I'm not, I'm not going out there in like the dangerous cold weather to work with horses that are trying to keep themselves warm and stuff like that. So Hazel really does the best and she makes the most progress when she's worked with on a regular basis. So because I don't have an indoor, I don't have like anything that's not just, you know, outside in the elements, nothing covered. I was like, I don't want her to just sit all winter long and then have to start all the way back over, you know, come spring. So I was like, I'm just gonna send her to a trainer that works all year round, that has an indoor that can keep her in season, like in, in work. So that's what I did. And so she's been there three months and has done really well for them and so she's gonna come home soon. So I can just move her right into trail riding season and riding season and I'm gonna put her in with the yearlings and BB. BB is kind of my um, training buddy. She ponies other horses really well. She gets along with like everyone. She pins her ears at very few horses. So I think if I buddy her up with Hazel, then those two can kind of, she can pony Somebody can ride her and pony me around on Hazel or I can just pony Hazel places and they'll be a good good team together. So that's my plan with her. But um, I also, okay, I wanted to talk about this whole quarter horse thing. Speaking of TikTok, um, <laughs> have you guys been following this like quarter horse lawsuit thing that I don't, know a ton about it. I've seen it kind of going around. Um, but I saw a video. I don't remember the girl that posted it. I'm trying to remember her name and I can't. Um, there's been a girl that's been covering it a little bit. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. My headphones are hurting my ears. There's been a gal that's been covering it on TikTok. And for what it sounds like, this gal is suing her horse trainer or this trainer for injuries to her horses basically or her horse um and it sounds like her the trainer was like going to a show over the weekend or something and didn't bother to let the owner of this horse know that the horse was like down in its stall for a while. It wasn't eating, it wasn't acting right, like something was wrong with it. So she should probably come check it out. So the girl gets there to check on her horse and like have a vet visit. And this horse like has a bulge or like a herniated disc in its back, like a, something wrong with its back. I'm trying to remember how they put it in the TikTok, but it was like a, a herniated disc or like something wrong with the spine of this horse, which is why it wasn't acting right. Nobody bothered to let her know until it got this bad. Um, you know, the barn owner or the trainer or the staff or anybody. So basically just something was wrong with her horse in probably horrific, severe pain and just nobody bothered to let her know. So I guess she is suing the trainer for negligence. And then, um, okay, I learned through this whole thing that there is a medication called Campophenic, which is a cold sore medicine. Never heard of it in my life. And I actually kind of would like to know where to find it because I get cold sores like a son of a bitch. I'm serious. My entire bottom lip, like I have chronic cold sores. I took medication all this winter for it this year, which I've never had to do, but... 
um, last year. It was so, so, sorry guys, my storage was full. Um, but anyways, for those of you watching on YouTube, you might be able to tell that like my bottom lip has these like light colored spots on them. Those are scars because I will get cold sores so horrifically that like it'll go from the corner of my mouth all the way almost over halfway across my lip the whole thing so I get them so chronically and it is absolutely miserable so I kind of want to know where to get this if anyone's heard of it or knows where to buy it let me know but anyways that wasn't the point um apparently in the western pleasure world and maybe other disciplines as well we're pouring this in horses ears um I've never heard of this like I said, never heard of this, but I just want to know what world we're living in that people are like, okay, that's a good idea. <laughs> so this Campo Phoenix stuff, I guess people are adopting it to pour in horses ears because the horses will perform better in the show ring if they cannot hear. And this Campo Phoenix stuff causes temporary and permanent deafness in horses so we're basically pouring chemicals into the horse's ears so that they can't hear during their classes in the show ring and it may or may not cause them to never be able to hear again and on top of that it's been found that this substance can cause like neurological brain damage basically so and just sit with that for a minute. I was learning about this via TikTok and I was just like, the human race will literally stop at nothing. I just wanna know like how these people can go to bed at night and sit with themselves with that. Um, it's making me think with the whole like back injury and stuff um for this girl's horse like the only the only in the only injury accident I guess that would cause that in my head first thing I'm thinking is the horse flipped over on itself with a saddle on um or f or fell fell back on a saddle I don't know how else like something like that that type of spinal damage would just happen um seemingly random but i struggle these days like with with how how we are we are still allowing sorry i don't know i don't even know the words like to put together to talk about this but how we are still allowing in the horse industry these super just cruel things to keep happening to horses by the people that are supposed to be caring about the horses the most. Um, you know, this isn't like, this is, this is literally people that are being paid millions of dollars that are winning hundreds of thousands of dollars every year to have the best of the best, nicest quality, best performing, smartest horses on the market yet these are the people doing these brutal horrible things to the animals literally mutilating them and i just don't get how the industry is so big and is doing so well that we are still allowing things like that to that severity to fly and just kind of go under the radar you can tell um, the horses that are are hearing impaired, I guess, in the ring, like you can tell which ones are in the show class that are clearly hearing impaired when their ears are just kind of flopped outward. Like, have you have you ever like gotten your horse sedated by the vet to get their teeth done or whatever? And sometimes, like, you know, your horse's ears will just kind of flop over to the sides and just kind of swing around. Um, they're not forward they're not back they're not fixed they're just kind of like flopping there 
Um, a lot of these horses show symptoms of that, like that in the show ring and that those are the ones that you can usually pick out that are clearly have um, hearing loss. And I guess they're not using the pom-poms in the ears anymore, which I know that, I know that, again, they don't look great. And, you know, you don't want to show up in the show ring with like these giant balls in your horse's ears because your horse can't behave or anything. But it's like, God, what, at, at what point do people stop? Like, why are we breeding stock that must be so little quality that we have to literally mutilate their whole freaking body to win the money? I mean, isn't that beyond the point? Like, that's not that's not what the point is. Like, we're supposed to be breeding horses to better the breed, to better perform, to be smarter, to be better. But instead of doing all that, we're just going to, like, make them go deaf, possibly give them brain damage, like, dock their tail so they can't freaking move their tail or can't move their ear. Oh, my God. It's like... Damn, there are people in the horse industry that truly, really do care about horses and want the best for horses. And there's small breeders out there that are trying to breed better horses and to make quality animals to better the breed and better the industry. And people that really do want the best for the animals, when do they get a chance to get ahead? Why are we putting these people up on these pedestals, these trainers that are that are getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars every year for people to train their horses and they're winning all this money in the show ring and then they get to do stuff like this to the animals. It's like our whole industry is based around these animals, yet we care about them so little that we're willing to completely, completely damage them. It just doesn't make any sense to me, you know? It's like... I th people that are naive like myself young naive girls that don't understand the evil in the industry and the evil that exists in the world don't get when when did the industry take a turn that it's still it's more about money it's more about winning the thousands and thousands of dollars and who can get to the top with the best the fastest than it is about the horses and I just don't get it. Like there are people like me that are training horses and trying to do everything in their power that is best for the horses and making the training process as easy and le as least stressful, as natural as possible that we can for the animals that really do want to strive to find, um, to find ways to put the horse first because at the end of the day, we're all here because at one time we loved horses, right? Um, you know, I think about me and trying to build my business and produce horses and sell horses that I think are, are good, solid animals. And I think about like the young girl that used to run around the living room on four legs because I just watched Spirit of the Cimarron Herd and it drove my parents nuts. Like I think about that girl. And when I just want to like tell all of my clients to pack up their shit and leave and I want to sell every single one of these horses, I think about I'm going to get to a place one day to make that girl proud because that girl just loved horses, right? And it's like you get into the real world and you get into these big industries where they don't give a shit about horses and people like me don't stand a chance against people like them to you know, make hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Who's somebody going to send their their horse to to be trained? The the girl that's into natural horsemanship and bitless and, and takes care of, of the horse or the person that's winning hundreds of thousands of dollars of show, in the show ring every year and has some really great buckles and trophies to back up their name, you know? So it's it's really tough to see people in the industry just completely, completely neglecting and completely abusing these horses that like have no other chance because of their bloodline or whatever. And we had this girl at a barn that I worked at. This is the last barn that I worked at. Um, she had a Western pleasure horse. And there was, there was one summer I worked there and she she requested him to be left in inside for a few days 
um, because he had to have a procedure done on his tail. And the barn manager told me to, you know, don't turn that horse out. He had, a, you know, something done with his tail, whatever. He needs to stay in the stall for a couple of days. And I was like, okay. So I left the horse in and I was, you know, working and I was like a procedure on his tail. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a vet, I guess, but I've never heard of anything being done on their tail unless she was having it like, like, you know, the nerves cut in it or something. And, um, the next day I was working with the barn manager and she was like, yeah, I don't know what, what she would have had done on his tail. Like I've never heard of a horse having to have anything done on its tail. And I was like, well, the only thing I've ever had like heard of is like, you know, when they dock their tails and stuff or not dock, but you know what I mean for, you know, to show them when they like cut the nerves in their tail. And she just looked at me and she was like, huh? And I was like, I don't know if she would do that, but like I did notice the horse yesterday when I left him in, like he was looking out the window, you know, whinnying to the other horses because he was left inside. And he turned around to poop and he didn't even move his tail to poop. Like he just shit all over the inside of his tail, all over like down his legs and stuff. And I was like, he, he couldn't even raise his tail at all to poop. And she just was like, she looked at me and just had the blankest face like, oh my God, that's 100% that's what she had done. And I was like, so we had our speculations, right? That, the, that that's what she had done. She had the her horse's tail nerve blocked. And we had to dress this horse head to toe in fly gear every day to put him outside, like four boots, a full on fly sheet, neck cover, fly mask, full face thing. And she still, she, the whole summer, she never told anybody like what she had done on her horse. Um, it was kind of just like, nobody really knew what procedure he had done, but, um, she was every week she was like, oh, yeah, he's still he's still not really moving his tail a whole lot, you know, from that procedure he had done. So just keep putting his fly gear on and fly spraying him and stuff. And we were just like, girl, if you can't even tell us like it's been two months at this point and your horse can't move his tail still like if you it's, it's some big secret that you can't even tell people what you had done on your horse, you probably shouldn't be doing it. I mean, for fuck's sake, like the tail and the ears that's like one of the biggest forms of communication that a horse has and you just chopped that right off just so you could get some more points in the show ring maybe figure out why does your horse have a tail problem in the show ring like they usually swish the tail aggressively out of pain um pain or discomfort um, occasionally like at another horse or something like that. But if it's such a problem that you have to nerve block it so your horse just, his tail is just paralyzed, then you probably have a bigger issue going on that needs to be looked into instead of just paying a vet. I can't even believe that vets still do it, honestly. Um, I'm surprised that there's an that there is large animal vets out there that claim to care about animals and they're still doing stuff like that. Um, they're gonna just pay a vet to cut its to cut its nerves and its tail instead, which I think that's the wrong terminology. Technically, I don't think that they cut the nerves anymore. Like I said, they block them with some like I don't know injection or something like that. I don't really know, but yeah, super frustrating. And that actually that same barn I worked at um, is when I learned we had a Western Pleasure trainer in this area. He actually used to live in the same town as me. But he's since moved out to like New Jersey, um, where this other trainer that's being sued on TikTok is from, which kind, of, which is really what piqued my interest about it because I was like, oh, I don't by chance know that guy, do I? No, I don't. But there was a Western Pleasure trainer that lived here, where I'm from, that moved out to New Jersey a few years ago. But he um, had he had a pretty well known name around here. And at that barn I was working at, um, we had four different boarders coming in and out throughout the years that had sent horses to him for training that all ended up with a dead horse. 
um, four different people, like, and this wasn't like some club, like let's gang up on this trainer. It was four different people who had happened to know this trainer and sent horses to them or boarded horses with them or whatever that knew of horses that had died in his care, um, or under his training or had been killed basically. So it's really kind of alarming. Um, just, just the brutality that is going on in some of the disciplines. And I'm not trying to just hate on Western pleasure, but that really seems to be where it somehow all comes back to a Western pleasure discipline. This same trainer, that same guy would do the thing where he would like tie their head around for hours and hours and hours and tie it to the saddle or tie it down between their legs. You hear of these, who is that trainer that was doing clinics? Um, a few years ago, I heard about it. That was like teaching the whole crowd how to how to drop their horse's head down and come to find out like she had been putting barbed wire under their lip for how many years. And so the horse would like, of course, just drop its head down right away because it was getting stabbed with barbed wire in its lip. And it's stuff like that, that it's just like, oh my gosh, dude, like how, like, at some point, I feel like if this, if these are AQAJ shows, like especially these big Western pleasure shows where we're giving, we're making all this money and stuff, something needs to be figured out. Like they need to start taking some responsibility for how horses should be allowed to be treated in their sport. Um, and I'm not just saying like AQAJ for Western pleasure, all the sports, like if it, if there's any suspicion that that horse might have its tail docked, look into it. If there is any suspicion that that horse has deaf ears or has had something poured in its ears today, get a vet over there to look at it. Like, find them, um, disqualify them, ban them. I don't know. I know it's, it's hard because like, those are the people that are, that are bringing the stock to the industry and are bringing the money and the names. But at the same time, it's like, at some time you have to draw a line. You know, or why do, why would anyone want to be a part of your organization if that's the type of treatment that you stand for? And I just don't, I don't get it. And I know there's more to this whole lawsuit thing that like, I'm not um, informed of. I do want to do a little bit more research about it, but it's just at some point, at some point, when do we start caring again? Um, it's like that whole um, nice guys finish last thing, you know, and it really does start to feel like that some days. It's like there, there really are good people that care about the horses, like to go on the spiel again, that really want to better the industry and want to create good, solid animals and are training the right way. Like I don't hate all Western pleasure people. I worked at a Western pleasure barn for like five years. Um, and I, and she, the barn owner showed she showed a lot. She showed at the Congress. She showed all over the place um, and was very regularly like bringing in money from those shows. And she was producing. She bred Western Pleasure horses and those mares, they lived pretty much in the pasture and for the most part um, stayed in the pasture with their foals and stuff, birthed inside, went back out to the pasture until those foals were ready to be weaned. And, um, yeah, I, I never really had a big issue with, you know, how she did things. And like, there are, there are those people, there are the small breeders that are treating their horses well. And there are people that are showing healthy horses that care about them. And it's like, why aren't they, why aren't they getting ahead? Like the people that truly deserve it and are in it for the right reasons. The, it's just the nice guys always finish last, you know? sucks but anyway I wanted to talk about that a little bit today I know I don't know everything about the situation but I am going to continue to try and follow it and see if um there's anything more that I learned about it we'll talk about it in the next episode um but that's about all I have for you guys today I think so I'm gonna go back outside to keep flipping my furniture piece um if you guys don't know I do have another channel that I have started my like DIY furniture flipping type, putting that type of stuff on it. So if you guys want to check that out, I'll leave it down below. I also have a new discount code with Guts Buster Hay Nets. So I put that info in the description below. I have an affiliate link and just a discount code that you can use at checkout. 
um, just MT Horses, my channel name here. I think it's here. It might be here. I don't know. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.